Greetings, pen pals. Have a not such a new pen uh, today, but one I have not featured in a video before, so I thought I would do that. This is the Noodler's Conrad. So this is a steel nib, flex nib, piston filling pen from Noodler's. Um, pretty, pretty nice pen um, as far as Noodler's pens go. Um, pretty uh, sort of basic standard size pen. Here it is compared to a Lamy Safari and a Pilot Metropolitan. So you can see size-wise, it's kind of right in line with these guys. Um, Weight-wise, it's a pretty light pen. It's mostly all fairly light acrylic. Um, weighs in at 17 grams. It is a piston filling pen, so this is an this cap is actually uh, removable here at the end, and that is the piston turning knob right there. The entire filling mechanism can be disassembled simply by unscrewing here with no tools using just your fingers, which is really, really nice. Um, so maintenance on this pen is extremely easy and robust. The nib and feed pull right out as well. So very easy pen to maintain. Um, in terms of uh, the furniture, we can go through that. It's got a nice cap band, steel cap band running all the way around. It says Noodle is Ink on it. Also a clip that says Noodle is Ink in that traditional sort of ink drop shape that a lot of Noodle is pens have. Again, this cap vinyl, top vinyl comes off. And if you say, for example, need to adjust the clip or tighten it or whatever, it's very easy to do. So again, pen completely disassembles, which is really, really a, um, a, a nice feature. Comes in a bunch of different materials and acrylics. This happens to be a red acrylic. The body and the cap are not the same. So it's a translucent red acrylic on the body. The Both the blind cap on the end and the pen cap itself are made of an opaque acrylic with black, uh, red with black streaks in it. So it might at first glance appear to be one material, but it is actually not. Um, nothing, so to speak, of on the finials on either end, but just just uh, smooth material there. It is a screw to uncap pen. Takes one and three quarter turns uh, to unscrew, and reveals the Noodler's uh, Conrad Flex nib with a little trim ring around the uh, uh, at the very uh, end of the section. The threads here are smooth and unobtrusive, and is fairly comfortable to hold. Again, I'm a big fan of posting. It posts very nicely and solidly. Again, I personally think it's too short to use unposted, but again, your mileage may vary. Very light pen, no back weighting here, or any reason really not to post it, from what I can tell, unless you just, just, just don't like posting, which is fine. It does have an ebonite feed, which is characteristic of almost all Noodleless pens, which is which is great. Um, the, uh, the nib is a steel nib, says Noodler's uh, Ink Company and has a slit that runs all the way down the nib with no breather hole. In terms of how it writes and how it flexes, we'll get to that in a minute. I think it might be worthwhile to compare this to some other Noodler's pens. So let's do that right now. Okay, size-wise, you could see that this is definitely one of the smaller uh, Noodler's pens. So here is our Noodler's Conrad. Here it is compared to a Noodler's Ahab. As you can see, it's quite a bit shorter and less girthier than that. Uh, also clearly smaller than the larger uh, Noodler's Triple Tail. And the big honking Noodler's pen here is the Noodler's Neponset. And as you can see, uh, it's considerably, uh, our, our uh, Conrad is considerably smaller than that one or any of these Noodler's pens. That's the outside of the pens. Let's compare the nibs now, shall we? Okay, so like I said, this one right here is our uh, Noodleless Conrad. Very, very similar, if not identical, to the nib that's on the Ahab. These are all flex nibs. These are two tine flex nibs with no breather hole. The uh, Neponset and the Triple Tail have three tined music nibs, uh, with also with no breather hole, but uh, very different shaped uh, 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 three tine nibs. So this one is the Neponset which is sort of a conventionally shaped nib, although it's three tines. The triple tail has this very, very different shape, sort of long tapered um, uh, 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 nib. I've done videos on all of these other pens. If you want to see how these guys write, please, I encourage you to check out the videos I did quite a while back on uh, all of these. But of course, pens were meant to write, and I know you want to see how this pen writes, and I'm going to show you that right now. All right, folks, what we're writing with here today is a Noodler's Conrad, and this has a steel flex nib 
Uh, this writes very well. It is smooth. It flows well. Um, I'd say it's quite wet. I would say it's above average wetness, which is really, really nice. Um, and a very, very nice writing pen. Now, you do want to see it flex, so I'm going to show you that. Um, so here's sort of no pressure at all. I'm going to apply some moderate pressure, and then I'm going to try to flex it quite a bit, and you can see it does. If you push it a little too much or you go a little too fast, it will railroad on you, but you can get quite a bit of line variation there. So look at the difference between these two lines. That's uh, quite a bit. So like I said, it's flexibility is pretty nice, as you can see. Not This is not like a vintage gold flex nib, but darn, this is pretty damn good. So I'm going to give it my official okie dokie seal of approval. Um, there you go. Nice, nice writing pen. But like one big difference between this and say a vintage flex nib, if you don't, if you just let the natural variation of pressure in your hand write, you're not going to get very much flexing. A vintage gold flex nib will just kind of flex on its own. This doesn't do that too much. You do have to like actually make a conscious effort to flex it for the most part, which is which is fine. That's kind of what you get par for the course with a steel flex nib. It's not meant to be a vintage gold flex nib. You don't pay what you pay for a vintage gold flex nib, etc. So this definitely gets the job done. I really like the flow, etc. Nice pen. Fills well. The filling mechanism works great. Holds a lot of ink. Um, nice piston filler. All in all, a good, clean uh, uh, pen that I think writes well, flows well, um, etc. And I like the ebonite feet. I'm just a big fan of ebonite feet. I like the fact that there's an ebonite feet in this guy. So, all in all, nice, nice pen. Did a good job. Um, that's about it for this pen. Let's talk about this ink now for a minute, shall we? Okay, we're going pretty basic here today. This is just simply noodlers. Red. Just plain old red. Um, and this is, you know, noodlers' standard red ink. Um, it is sort of a darkish red. Here's what uh, the color card on this guy looks like. So it's definitely a darkish red. Here it is compared to, say, Fred Rod Birmingham Fred Rogers Cardigan Red. Here it is compared to Waterman Audacious Red. Here it is next to Noodler's Black Swan and English Roses. Here it is next to J. Herban Rouge Granat, which is a bit pinker. And here it is next to Robert Oster Aster Kiza Rote, which is a bit darker. But again, this is, in general, I would say a darkish kind of red. It's not a bright, bright red like say um, water, the Waterman Audacious Red or the Diamond Poppy Red, um, etc. But a nice, nice serviceable red uh, that writes well, flows well, etc. Nothing fancy going on here at all. Um, that's what it looks like on this Rhodia paper. Let's take a quick look at what this ink looks like on Tomoe River paper now, shall we? Okay, what we're writing with here on Tomoe River paper, as we said, is Noodler's red. And uh, again, very, very nice ink. Uh, pretty shade of red, not too, too bright. Again, a little bit on the darker side, but a nice, nice uh, red all in all. Um, okay, I guess that will just about do it for this episode. I sure hope you enjoyed watching this. I sure enjoyed making it for you. And until we see each other again, have a great day. Bye-bye. Okay, who's still with me? If you didn't turn this video off, I got a little bit of a treat for you. I am going to do my first ever giveaway. I've been doing videos for quite a few years. I have several hundred videos. I've never done a giveaway. I'm doing my first one. What I'll be giving away is 
my a pen bbs 535 limited edition pen you won't be getting this one this is my one that i've been using i have a brand new one mint in package that i will be sending to you um, if you are the winner of my giveaway so this is the pen bbs limited edition year of the ox model 535 i have an entire video reviewing this pen take a look at it i'm actually quite fond of it but i do have an extra it's still in the package never been opened never been inked and that's what you will be getting couple of rules. Unfortunately, I'm only prepared to ship to a U.S. address, so that's rule number one. You can certainly enter from anywhere in the world, but unless you have a friend or relative in the U.S. that I can mail the winning, uh, the, 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 the winning pen to, uh, uh, that won't it, it work exactly. So I do can only uh, ship the winning pen to a U.S. address. How do you win? You simply comment on this video with an answer to the following question. Um, if you, re, if you watch my channel on a regular basis, a little while ago, I posted a video, uh, uh, a short video while I was on vacation. The answer I'd like you all to try to guess is, where was I on my vacation? I didn't say, I did not say in the video where I was, but let's see if anybody can guess. So here's what's gonna happen. Anybody who makes a reasonable close guess as to where I am, Anybody who makes a reasonably close guess as to where I am, and I'll be the judge of what constitutes reasonably close or not, uh, will uh, be effectively entered to win, and then I will randomly pick from all those people who make a reasonably close guess as to where I was on vacation. You don't get extra points for getting closer than somebody else. So based on what people answer and how the answers go, go, I will determine what constitutes reasonably close. Anybody who posts an answer to this uh, uh, on this video uh, as to where uh, um, uh, I was, that's reasonably close, again, will be entered, and I will pick a random winner from those, and then I will send you uh, uh, your pen. Uh, again, it uh, only will ship to U.S. Uh, addresses, but it's a nice pen, and I hope you like it. And if this is successful, I might try other um, uh, giveaways as well. The deadline for entering will be July the 15th of 2021 so that's july the 15th of 2021 deadline so you have a little bit of time to go watch that video it's only a couple minutes long and then guess uh where i am but remember the guess has to be in a comment on this video not on that one so put the answer do your guess on this video as to where you think i am and you will be entered to win and remember i can only ship winning pens to uh u.s addresses there will only be one winner and good luck to all of you and again thank you for watching and now for the last time bye bye